Welcome back to JEOP Evangelistic Outreach Project. I'm Evangelist Jerry Doe. Happy blessed 2022 New Year. Oh yes, my brothers and my sisters. Happy blessed 2022 New Year. We continue to give God all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory that is due to him. We thank God for those who stopped by on yesterday evening for our first virtual praise gathering. To God be the glory. Oh, we're in for an awesome Bible study inspiration on today. Today, we're going to be talking about the word joyfulness. Oh, yes, joyfulness. Praise God. Praise God. If this is your first time joining us, oh, we welcome you to the channel. We encourage you to subscribe to the channel and also, as we say, share the Bible study inspiration with others. So come on and get your word, get your word. Come on, my brothers and my sisters. This is a happy, blessed 2022 new year as we prepare our hearts and our minds now for our Bible study inspiration on joyfulness. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, in the Holy Scriptures to Galatians chapter 5. We're going to start reading at verse 22. And the word of God reads, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Today, we're going to pause and look at joy. Yes, we're going to be talking about the fruit of the Spirit, joy, joyfulness. The fruit of joy being defined, when we look at the word joy, oh, I'm thinking of the word honor, reverencing God, uh, being happy, Happily is an outward expression, joyfulness, being very happy, being, and it's a loud voice of that expression of being cheerful and happy as we make that outward expression to reverence God as we reverence God. I'm so reminded of Nehemiah, the Nehemiah in chapter uh, eight of Nehemiah, the word there declares, it speaks of the joy of of the Lord. It truly is our strength. I know some of you are familiar with that. The joy of the Lord truly is our strength. I'm also reminded too when David was preparing to take the ark back to Jerusalem in First Chronicles chapter 15 and the word of God there reads, and David spoke to the leaders of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be singers with instruments of music psalteries and harps and cymbals sounding by lifting up the voice with joy joy even joy 
in sounding of the instruments, the joy and outward expression, being cheerful, being very happy, being loud in that reverence, that outward expression uh, to God. When we look at showing us the way, how joy, how the word joy teaches us on how to, it would show us the way, look at Psalms, Psalms chapter 16, verse 11, and there the word of God reads, Thou would show me the path of life, in thy presence of is fullness of joy. At thy right hand are the pleasures forevermore. The fullness of joy, the word of God, it allows us to be able to express out, to breathe out that expression from within, an outward expression of being very happy, being very cheerful, honoring and reverencing God. The joy of the Lord, it truly is our strength. When we look at deliverance, being delivered by the word of joy, for his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Weeping, it may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. My brothers and my sisters, when we can grab hold of joy, when we can begin to allow joy to minister to us as we're walking through the path that God has declared for us as believers. We can walk through with the peace and knowing that God is a God of peace. We can walk through with joy, being joyful in all situations. The joy of the Lord, it truly is our strength. I think about two Psalms 100. The 100th Psalm, verse 1, and David there wrote this song, and the first verse says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Some versions say, make a joyful shout unto the Lord. That's that verbal outward expressing with a loud voice, being cheerful for joy. Thirst. Do you have that thirst, that thirst and hunger for God? Do you have that thirst for joy? Or oh, turn now, if you will, to Psalm 63. Yes, Psalm 63, verse 5. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fortness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Hmm, a thirst for God. When we have that thirst, that inward thirst for God, that outward expression of joy begins to come. Joy cometh in the morning, the fruit of joy, the fruit of joyfulness. The fruit of joyfulness. We're going to pause right here and look at the similarities between the biblical character, Apostle Paul and Silas, and the animal character of the black chap chickadee bird. Now, some may say, now, what do they have in common? animals and then humans. What's in common? What's the commonality here? What's similar is their verbal outward expression of joy. They both sing. How we sing in that outward expression. We're just going to pause and just look at the two that are similar. Yes, it is, my brothers and my sisters. It is so similar. So I just want to share that with us today as we look at joy Fullness being that very outward expression to God as we reverence God with that joy. And how we can say on the inside as we're going through things, we can truly say the joy of the Lord. It truly is our strength. The fruit of joyfulness, as we look at the biblical character of Apostle Paul and Silas, we're going to look at Acts 16, but I need you, my brothers and my sisters, during your study time to really dive deep and study into the Word of God with Acts chapter 16. I'm just going to do just a little snippet on today. So here as we look at Acts chapter 16, we're going to see what had happened to Apostle Paul and Silas. So verse 10, and the Word of God reads, And after he had seen 
the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. So we see that Paul and Silas found themselves in Macedonia. And we go down here to verse 16, and we're going to see what happens. We're going to see eventually how the joy was being able to come up out of Apostle Paul and Silas. And the word of God here reads in verse 16, And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain maid possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Verse 17, the same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who show unto us the way of salvation. Verse 18, and this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Praise God. Praise God. So we see what happened. This woman was a soothsayer. That means she was bring, being used to give someone else money. So they were offended by that. I'm just paraphrasing. But Paul and Silas found themselves cast into prison. Yes, they were cast into prison. We're going to see how they were able to allow that joy to still come up from the inside. We may not be in a physical building of a prison, but we can be in prison in our mind. Yes, in our mind. So when we find ourselves in that state of being Present inside our mind, we can learn from the word of God. We can glean from the word of God on how to allow the joy, the joy of the Lord, my brothers and my sisters, truly is our strength. The fruit of joyfulness. Yes, the black chap chickadee bird. Have you ever heard of that bird? The chickadee bird. This bird can be found throughout the United States and also in Canada. It's a very small bird, but you know what? This bird can live among mixed uh, cultures, I would, one would say. This bird can also has been known to feed, to eat off a human's hand. Yes, to feed uh, from a human's hand. So this is a black chap chickadee bird. This bird sings all types of sung songs and medleys that comes from within a bird. Yes, this bird sings with joy makes that very happily outward expression. Yes, the black chap, chickadee bird. The fruit of joyfulness. As we look at some statements here that I just put down, as we look at Paul, Paul had a vision. Yes, Paul received the vision from God, and Paul went, he was called to preach at Macedonia. Yes, to preach the gospel in Macedonia. Paul was a Roman citizen. Silas was a leader among his brothers, and Silas was chosen to go with Paul on his second missionary journey. Now here, it's important to know that not everyone, hmm, not everyone is called and chosen according to Bible scripture, but here Silas was chosen to go with Paul. So Paul had division. Paul was called to preach the gospel in Macedonia. Paul was a Roman citizen, and Silas was a leader among his brothers, and Silas was chosen to go with Paul on his second missionary journey. And we see here the statement with the chickadee bird. Hey, the color stays gray all year long on this little bird. Both parents build a nest from the young, both parents build the nest from the young, and both parents, they assist in rearing of their offspring. Both parents assist in rearing of their offsprings, and this bird, 
is always cheerful. Yes, the chickadee bird hmm, is always cheerful. The fruit of joy. Yes, looking at the fruit of joy, as we talk about joyfulness, we will look at the goal that each have and what is similar in both of the goals. We see here that Apostle Paul was called to spread the gospel. Apostle Paul had a vision to go and minister to the Macedonians. So we see here, this is the goal, go spread the gospel the good news, and then also spread the gospel to the Macedonians. And we're going to see how they were able to do this in spite of the obstacles what they that they encountered. We see the, the black chap chickadee bird, and that bird go, the bird has a merry heart, a merry heart. And this bird sings three different types of song, doing three different types of season, this bird sings three different types of songs. So we're going to see what's similar in their similarities in looking at how they're able both to obtain the gold at hand. Amen. The fruit of joyfulness. As we look at the obstacle, yes, the obstacle that Paul and Silas faced. Paul and Silas found themselves, they were falsely accused and in prison. They were falsely accused and in prison. They were beaten near death before they were cast into prison. And here too, Paul and Silas, they had a chance to escape while in prison, but they chose to stay. And here we can find more about this in Acts chapter 16. When we look at the obstacles of the chickadee bird, here this bird resides in midst forest or near residential areas. That's where this bird resides. This bird travels. It travels with other birds, it travels with the kinglet, the nut hat, the woodpecker, the tea mouse birds, and that's how this bird travels. This bird now can only travel short distances. It cannot go very far, but travels short distances. And under diverse situation, this bird always sing. So we're going to see how the obstacles that they both face how they're able to continue in the state of joyfulness. The fruit of joyfulness, how to obtain the goal. We're going to look and see what Apostle Paul and Silas did. They remained joyful throughout their imprisonment. They remain joyful. Remember now, we're saying also, a person does not have to be physically in prison, but one can be prison in their mind and their thoughts. And so therefore, we must begin to operate in that transformed, renewed mind that God has given and remain joyful. We see here that Apostle Paul and Silas, in the midst of their adversity, they sang songs of praise and they prayed. Oh, yes, my brothers and my sisters, it is so important that we begin to pray and praise God. Pray and praise for all things is all about, about our attitude and our attitude of joy. God is a God of peace and the joy of the Lord truly is our strength. The, uh, the another obstacle was to that the guard and his family were saved and baptized. Praise God. You know, we talked earlier when we said that Paul and Silas had an opportunity to leave the prison, but they did not. They stayed. They stayed. So I encourage you all to read Acts uh, chapter 16 and dive yet a little deeper, and we will see a little more in terms of what has happened there. If they were not able to stay to the end of their purpose, their call, as, as Paul, Apostle Paul, had a vision to go to Macedonia. And going through those obstacles, 
the, the perhaps the guard and his family would not have been saved and baptized. Amen. As we look at the chickadee bird, we see that the male mate cleans the nest and takes the trash miles away from the area. Huh, isn't that something? The bird whistles during maiden season, and normally the bird sings three different types of song in three different types of settings. So that is something that's such certainly very awesome there. The bird also, the chickadee bird also rarely leaves its birthplace when the climate changes. And remember too that this bird travels with other birds such as the kinglet, the nuthatch, the woodpecker, the tea mouse, and they travel very short distances. So one can only begin to imagine what type of other obstacles this bird may encounter. But that bird remains standing and remains singing cheerfully, you know, singing that cheerfully. Paul and Silas, they remained, they were where they were at, and they began to yet begin to sing praises and pray to the Most High God. Amen. The fruits of joyfulness. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, joy is to find as we honor and reverence the Most High God. We can be happy. We can be, uh, we can have that loud outward expression of joy. The joy of the Lord truly is our strength. Joy cometh in the morning. Joy is already here on the inside because God gives us that joy. God gives us peace. So we just be able to allow it to come on up out and just verbally express that joy. Joyfulness. Yes, joyfulness. So I need you to practice your joy Practice being, having your outward expression of joy. We're going to just practice your joy now. Don't forget to go back and read in its entirety, uh, Acts chapter 16. So we see even more of what we can learn and glean from, from Apostle Paul and Silas. I have a question as always. Are you smiling? Are you smiling? Yes, that smile can go along ways, my brother and my sister. The smile can go a long way. Thank you for joining us and thank you for sharing the Bible study inspiration with others. So now my brothers and my sisters, let's remain joyful throughout this blessed season. So happy blessed 2022 New Year. God bless you.